Hello, I'm Kasia Madeira. This is Outside Source. And the longest running series on US TV, The Simpsons makes a major U-turn after being accused of dealing in racial stereotypes. Hello, welcome to the program. We're going to start the show in Washington because France's Emmanuel Macron has addressed the US Congress at the end of this three-day state visit. At times, it was quite the contrast to his American counterpart because he called for action on climate change, he urged multinationalism, and he called on Donald Trump not to abandon the Iran nuclear deal. Here he is on that latter subject. Now we're going to move on because today a Danish court has found Peter Madsen, he's a Danish inventor, guilty of premeditated murder of the Swedish journalist, that's Kim Wall. Now the judge described the attack as a brutal, a cynical, planned sexual assault, a brutal murder on a random woman. Now, Kim Wall's death has gripped Danish media, and I have to say, it is particularly gruesome. Here are the details. On August the 10th last year, Kim Wall was writing a story about the inventor. She boarded his homemade submarine in Copenhagen. Then, a day later, the vessel sank. Kim Wall was notified as missing. Then, just 10 days later, her mutilated torso was discovered on a beach. Police divers then later on went on to found her head, her legs and her clothing at sea. Now, this is the last image of Kim. She's standing next to Mr Madsen and, as you can see, he's, she's smiling. Now, Mr Madsen, he changed his story surrounding her death three times and he maintains that it was an accident. He says that he is appealing this verdict. Let's get more from Maddie Savage, who joins us from Copenhagen. Oh, thanks to Maddie there for bringing us the latest on that verdict. Now we're going to turn to Turkey, where 15 journalists from the country's biggest opposition newspaper have been sentenced on terror-related charges. This controversial case has raised alarm bells over the state of press freedom in Turkey. Well, the court ruled that the case against the prominent journalist, Dkan Dunbar, previously the newspaper's editor-in-chief, would go on to continue separately. A little earlier, I spoke to to the BBC's Mark Lowen, who's in Istanbul, about the penalties that have been imposed. The Windrush immigration row continues. Amber Rudds has said that she bitterly regrets not seeing the scale of the problem. Well, today, Jeremy Corbyn used today's Prime Minister's questions to call for the Home Secretary to resign. Well, the Labour leader's call came ahead of Amber Rudd's appearance at the Home Affairs Select Committee. She told MPs she'd become aware of cases in recent months, but did not see it as a widespread issue. Welcome, this is Outside Source, live from the BBC Newsroom. Our lead story is that... Now, some of the other stories that we're working on here in the BBC Newsroom. Now, just a few hours ago, the Wall Street Journal put up this report that the US Department of Justice is formally investigating whether Huawei violated US sanctions related to Iran. Well, Stu Wu broke the story, and I'm pleased to say that Stu joins us now. So just give us a little bit more detail, Stu. Thanks so much, Stu Wu, there. Right, well, let's move on because we've got some more... Uh, Outside source business stories for you. We're going to talk about the global media bidding war, which has begun because Comcast, the American owner of NBC Universal and the country's biggest cable company, has formally made an offer to buy Britain's Sky TV. Well, Comcast made an all cash offer worth more than. $30.7 billion. That's uh, £12.50 £12 a share. The offer is at a 16% premium to the offer on the table from Rupert Murdoch's, which was uh, £10.75, uh, or that's around £16 billion for the 61% of Sky that it does not already own staggering figures. Our media editor, Amal Rajan, has lots more on our website if you want to check out some of his analysis on that. And let's have a listen to what he had to say. Amal Rajan there. And as I mentioned, lots more analysis from Amal on our website. Let's take a pause from all those huge figures because April is 
one of the busiest months of the year for tourism in Japan. Last year, a staggering 2.5 million visitors arrived in April, and many are hoping to participate in what is known as Hanami. Now, this is the practice of viewing cherry blossoms. It's a long-standing Japanese tradition, and it welcomes in the spring. Here's one tourist's story for us. Oh, it looks stunning. I've never been. If you have, let me know. Now, do stay with us here on Outside Source because in the next uh, part of the program, we'll be looking at this California cold case. This is the Golden State Killer, a notorious serial killer linked to 12 murders, all carried out in the 70s and 80s. Well, police have named him. We will be live in California with that story and many, many others. If you want to get in touch, of course, it is hashtag BBCOS. But for the time being, from me and the team, Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Kesha Madeira. This is Outside Source, and these are the main stories right here in the BBC. Welcome back to the program. Now, police in California claim to have caught a notorious serial killer. It is decades after he carried out a string of murders and rapes that earned him the name of the Golden State Killer. Well, at a press conference, they unveiled a photo of this man who they've named as Joseph James D'Angelo. He's believed to be a former police officer. He is now in his 70s. He's been charged with two counts of murder, but is suspected of more than 50 rapes, another 12 murders. All of these were carried out in the 1970s and the 1980s. Well, police say that they discarded DNA was used to finally match the suspect. Here's a little of what they said. The brother of one of the many, many victims. Let's talk to James Cook. He joins us from Los Angeles. James, this is what's known as a cold case. These crimes happened in the 70s and 80s. Just remind us about what happened. Now, Emmanuel Macron has been addressing the US Congress. Of course, that's been our top story at the end of his three-day state visit. He called for action on climate change, urged multinationalism. He called on Donald Trump not to abandon the Iran nuclear deal. And of course, we had that phrase, the bromance between these two men. Lots more, as always, on our website. And if you'd get, like to get in touch, then it's hashtag BBCOS from me and the team. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.